FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Welcome back. About a quarter till the hour right now. I, we're continuing to monitor uh, the events in uh, Washington, D.C. regarding the FBI director and Comey. And you can uh, f- continue to talk about that and follow it here on FM News Talk 97.1. I'm sure they'll be talking about it on the DGS today as well. We're going to try to get... Catherine Harridge on the air tomorrow because she's been one of the reporters outside the door of this hearing all day and um, anxious to hear what she might have to say about it. So if you tuned in uh, for that last segment, you heard a couple of gentlemen uh, who are uh, former Navy SEALs who who have some disagreements with the way Eric Greitens is running his campaign. We asked uh, Austin Chambers uh, to come in from the Greitens campaign. He's, he's Eric Greitens' campaign manager. Uh, because I want to be as fair as I can on this. I mean, these guys clearly have a point of view. Yes. Um, but on your website and in videos you produce, you ha- seem to have an equal number of SEALs who lay a lot of praise uh, down for Eric. So yeah. d- l- let them have it. A- you, you heard Mark, them on here. And, uh, thank you for, for having us on to set the record straight today. Sure. You know, I had an opportunity to listen to the interview before, and I have to tell you, it was it was 10 minutes worth of lies, but, but no specifics. And that's what we've seen uh, from this, what was previously an anonymous uh, attack group. But what we now know uh, is, uh, is an attack uh, video uh, in group that uh, Mr. Bruner and his team are, are behind. Uh, and that's disappointing. Uh, but what I will say uh, is... Uh, Eric Greitens is is proud uh, of every day that he served, and he has always been upfront and honest about every day he served. Uh, He he served four deployments in the global war on terrorism. He was in Afghanistan. He was in Southeast Asia. He was in the Horn of Africa. Uh, And then after President Bush asked him, uh, uh, and and, and he was honored to receive a White House fellowship, after that was over, he volunteered to go back to Iraq as a Navy SEAL at the heart of the surge and command an al-Qaeda targeting cell. Uh, on a nearly eight-month deployment. Uh, For his service as a Navy SEAL, he received the Combat Action Ribbon. He received a Purple Heart. He received a Bronze Star. Well after the end of his active duty service in 2011, he was named the the Junior Reservist Line Officer of the Year, the number one junior officer in the country by the United States Association of the Navy. Uh, Eric is proud of everything he did as as a Navy SEAL, and he's proud of what he has continued to do since he came home uh, to continue to serve his fellow veterans, people that uh, that that were wounded far worse than he was in war. Uh, he wanted to find a way to continue to serve and continue to give back to make their lives uh, continue to matter here at home. So you mentioned the Bruner campaign. I mean, I asked Paul Holzer about that. He admitted that he did uh, work for them, and the title they gave him was chief of staff. And he claimed that it was you know they don't just hand that back. out, Mark. Well, come on, you know? yeah, they they don't they don't just hand that out. And you know, he's been disingenuous and he's been misleading people, uh, different reporters throughout the day, and he keeps getting his stories mixed up. Uh, it wasn't just a summer job. His last payment that he received from the Bruner campaign, according to Missouri Ethics Commission reports, that I hope your your listeners will go verify was on October 29th. He received nearly $100,000 in payments from the John Bruner campaign. On their reports, it says that he was paid for campaign management and strategic uh, campaign management. This was a gentleman who was John Bruner's chief of staff and his campaign manager after he launched his campaign, not just during the exploratory committee, as he said, or he wasn't just a, a temporary analyst, as he's uh, told other uh, reporters throughout the day. This is a, a guy uh, who is engaging in attacks against us, and he has been for several months, and they're politically motivated, uh, and they are connected uh, to Mr. Bruner, and Mr. Bruner needs to answer for it. Are you? What does he know? When did he know it? Wh- 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 what did he pay uh, Paul Holzer for? You know, they can't even get their story straight. The Bruner campaign has now given close to four different accounts on what Paul Holzer did, when he worked for him, what relationship uh, they've had since uh, the the end of his service on the campaign, when's the last time they spoke with him, etc. It's disappointing uh, that that Mr. Bruner and his team are attacking someone's honorable military service. So let me play devil's advocate for a minute. Yes, sir. How many campaigns have you worked for? I've worked for several. Uh, Okay. So this guy claims he was a political analyst and he worked for... Trump and Scott Brown and a yes. number of different people, and he doesn't view his role over there any differently. But I guess yeah. the allegation is that 
You think the 100000 he was paid ending last October, he's still getting money to well, do this? Well, here's the thing. It, uh, if it was what he said it is, it, it wouldn't be all that bad. But there's more to the story. Uh, he's now running a super PAC against us. His brother, uh, Adam McLean, also worked for the Bruner campaign. They left around the same time, supposedly. Okay. And then a couple days later set up this super PAC, Patriots for America, that for the last several months has been attacking us. That's a super PAC that is now under state and federal investigation because it is believed that they are funneling money, according to FEC commissioners. Multiple FEC commissioners have come forward in or in, uh, in news outlets like Politico and said uh, that this organization is being investigated and that they are likely funneling money. Uh, they are doing some really uh, shady uh, stuff over there and, and are continuing to come after us. So who, who, if it was what you said it is, it, it would be fine. But the thing is, they're being disingenuous and they're misleading people. Who, who lodged those complaints against them? Uh, it was a uh, it was a uh, economics professor uh, at Mizzou who happens to be a, a supporter of our campaign. Uh, when he uh, dug into this information uh, and and started figuring out what could be done about it, he came to us and and talked about filing a complaint. Once that complaint is is filed, uh, it is completely out of the person who has filed the complaint's hands, and it is handled by the Federal Elections Commission uh, and the Missouri Ethics Commission. But before complaints were even filed, and your listeners should should go uh, look into this, uh, Politico wrote uh, a, a story uh, on what was this uh, shady group in Missouri doing because they were hiding their donors and and they they were they were sending things out without having any contributors. They've sent out mail. They've put out attack videos against us. They've put out attack web ads. And uh, and really, at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Bruner has to take ownership and has to take responsibility for what his team uh, and those close to his team are doing. But but again, w- what is the link? to John Bruner in that pack other than Paul Holzer? Uh, Adam McLean is the treasurer of that pack and was also an employee uh, of John Bruner's. Okay. So there are right. two John Bruner employees, his former campaign manager and chief of staff. So the the, the main person in charge and that uh, one other employee, Adam McLean, both uh, were on the Bruner campaign uh, during the exploratory committee and during the actual campaign. Uh, and then supposedly... Uh, Adam uh, McLean, uh, Paul Holzer's brother, was fired. So apparently Paul Holzer, quote-unquote, fired his brother. That's how shady this gets. And then a couple days later, he was gone. He left himself. And, and days later, uh, some seven to ten days later, uh, the super PAC was filed with the Federal Election Commission. Uh, and, and they started attacking Mr. Greitens. So it is clear what their intentions were uh, when, when, when they started this and when they decided to leave the campaign. And uh, he took that nearly 100 thousand dollars that he received uh from mr bruner during during that uh period that he was managing his campaign and uh and we're not sure who's funding uh the uh the super PAC that's uh, running these ads because they haven't disclosed it okay all right. So it's it's money from outside of Missouri. Is that what you're alleging? It's we, based in Virginia we, we somewhere? We don't know. It's it's based, uh, it's actually based uh, at uh, Adam McLean uh, and their family's residence. Uh, you know, um, a couple hundred uh, national uh, media outlets actually did a uh, did an investigation and did a few stories a few weeks ago on this group because mm-hmm. there was a, a shady um, uh, expenditure they got from the Trump campaign under a Draper Sterling LLC. So this is, this is wrapped up in, in a number of ways of, of where they're doing some really shady stuff and and Eric is uh, is the target uh, of all of it here uh, and it's uh, it, it it's sad that politics comes to this but you know what it's just typical uh, political insiders typical career politicians and and that's what Eric's running against and that's why he's the target uh, of so many of these political insiders and these different groups that are that are trying to stop this campaign because they understand we represent a threat and uh, and right now uh, that's what the people are looking for is someone who's going to stand up to this someone who has never run for office before and uh, and someone who's running to make a difference. You see some parallels there with the Trump campaign? Well, you know, they're, they're both conservative outsiders who's never run for office before who are coming in to, to shake up the status quo. I don't know if I'd call Trump a conservative outsider. Well, he he is uh, he's definitely more conservative than Hillary Clinton. That's well, for sure. that's for sure. You don't have to go very far to get that. So so the nature of this, uh, we were talking about this before we went on the air, yes, the sir. nature of this primary campaign is that with less than 30 days to go, things are starting to get a little nasty for a lot of candidates right now, including uh, 
what are we talk about? The attorney general candidates are yeah. firing away on each other right yeah, now. You know, as we, well. Yeah, that's right, Mark. We were just watching the the TV before we went on here and uh, and saw the attack ads, uh, attack ads going back and forth. And uh, you know, it's it's the nature of, of like you said, it's the nature of where we are and and headed into the election. But uh, you know, it, it's one thing if you're if you're attacking on actual facts and, and and you're you're letting people know the differences that you have. But when you attack someone's honorable military service, that's where it goes too far. Everyone who's ever worn the uniform, every Everyone who's ever served uh, our country uh, should should be proud of their service, and we should applaud every veteran uh, and everyone who's ever served, and we should honor them. and uh, And that that's what we've done during our campaign. That's what Eric's done his entire life. Uh, that's what he's done with the mission continues. That's now in all fifty states and helping nearly eight thousand veterans. Uh, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Uh, you know, Mr. Bruner was a Marine, and we applaud him for for his service. And he talks about that on the campaign trail. Catherine Hannaway talks about her experience and different things she's done. Peter Kinder talks about his experience and different things he's done. That's the nature of a campaign. People deserve to know what have you done? What's your experience? Uh, how has that shaped who you are? How does that uh, shape how you will lead and what you will do for the state? And uh, that's what this primary campaign's all about. And uh, it's just a shame uh, that uh, desperate political insiders are, 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 are pulling these type of political games and gimmicks and the people of Missouri are going to see right through it. Well, I mean, here we have a lot of respect for anybody who served yes and uh I, I, that's why i wanted to make sure i got you on the air yes, we're talking sir. to austin uh, chambers again by the way who's the uh, uh campaign director for eric right and so um i appreciate you coming in thank and you mark for for allowing us to do it absolutely and, and thanks for telling eric's side of it and best of luck with the rest of this campaign good thank you All mark right. yeah absolutely thank you um austin chambers there with the uh, Greitens campaign